Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Java Basics. Today, we're talking about arrays. In other words, we're going to be storing multiple values in one variable. Now, if you've missed any of the prior videos in this series, I'm going to put a link to the first video in the description below so you can catch up on anything you may have missed. Anyway, let's jump right in. If you want to learn Java programming or just programming in general, subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of videos that range from beginner topics to more advanced programming concepts. Also, please like this video, share it with a friend, and write a comment as well. It goes a long way to help promote a channel like this. Now, let's get back to the video. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. First, we're going to cover the basics of an array. Then we're going to cover multi-dimensional arrays. They're a little more complicated. What we're not going to cover in this video is something called an array list. This allows us to have variable length arrays. That'll be the topic of a future video. For now, we're just going to cover the basics of a fixed length array and multi-dimensional arrays. Now in Java, if we declare a variable, we declare it as a certain type and it can hold one value. If we decide to assign another value to that variable, it's going to replace the original value. An array, however, is also declared as a certain type, but it could hold multiple values. And we number those values starting at zero. Here's an example. This is a basic array that stores the names of animals. These values are the index of the array. As you can see, they're integers. They form the purpose of numbering the items in the array. Speaking of the items, these are all called elements. Each item in the array is called an element, and it could be any type. In our example, this is a string, but they don't have to be strings. We can store numbers. We can store strings, obviously. We can store booleans, doubles, whatever you like. This is actually the zeroth element of the array. Now, it looks like it's the first element, but in Java, everything begins with zero. So this is called the zeroth element of the array. The value is cat. This is actually the first element of the array. The index is one, and the element's value is dog. Now, just because Java begins everything with the number zero does not mean that the length of the array is four. As you can see, there are five elements in this array, so the length is five. So let's review what we have so far. We have an array of length five and the type of elements we're storing, strings. So how are we going to declare this variable in Java? Well, declaring a regular variable, animals, of type string is done as follows, right here. If we want to change this into an array, we're going to add something right after the word string. We add these square brackets, and this indicates to Java that the variable animal is not going to store one string it's going to store an array of strings, in other words, multiple values. And adding this code will allow us to actually create and allocate the memory for this array. This tells Java that animals will be of type string array. And then we're going to tell Java, create a new string array of length five. Now it's important to note that when we declare and allocate an array in Java, we have to specify the length. In other words, once we do this line of code, this array called animals can never have more values. If we need to add more values, we have to make a brand new array. Java's arrays are fixed length. They can't be increased ever. Let's head over to NetBeans and create this array. All right, here we are in Java. I've created a class called learning arrays inside my main method. I'm going to declare my variable. We're going to call it animals. But as usual, as I said before, we need to add square brackets to indicate that this will store multiple values. In other words, it's an array. And now let's initialize and allocate the memory. We're telling Java now that animals will be of length five. In other words, it can store five values. How do we actually assign the values? Well, let's do that here. We would say animals zeroth element is going to be equal to cat. And let's continue and add out all of the other four items or elements. So now we've created our array. We've allocated five spots for elements in our array. And we've set those items in the array equal to our five animals, our values. If we want to print some of these, we can print one as follows. So this will print the element at index two, which in this case is lion. Let's run it, make sure it works. And there's our lion, perfect. 
Now there's another way of assigning items in an array. Let me comment out this code. Now, if I want to assign these five values into animals, I don't technically need this code. What I could do is I could say that animals equals, and then in curly brackets, I'll put all of the elements in my array. Cat, dog, lion, tiger, and bear. Now what this does is this is a shortcut way of doing all of this. This says cat will be in the zeroth element, dog in the first, lion second, tiger third, bear fourth. And it also tells Java that the length of this array is five because you've initialized it with five values. So if I try and add another value later on, Java won't allow me to. Let's double check, make sure this still works. And we still get lion, zero, one, two. We're printing the second element, perfect. Now, because the index indices of this array are integers, it's very easy to use a for loop to traverse the array. Let's head over to NetBeans and check it out. The first thing you can see is I've undone the initialization as I, as I showed you with the shortcut using the curly brackets. I went back to my original initialization of the array where I specified each one individually. Now, instead of printing the second element, I want to print the entire array. So here's how we do it with a for loop. So let's take a look at this for loop and break it down. We have a variable i, we started at zero, we're gonna print animals of zero. We then add one to i, i is now one. Is i still less than five? Sure it is. We print animals of one. Keep going, animals of two, animals of three, animals of four. As soon as we print animals of four, we add one to i, i is now five, it's no longer less than five, Therefore, we exit. Test it out, see how it works, and there we go. We get cat, which is our zeroth element. Then the next is dog. And of course, at the end, we get lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Now, let's say we want to know the length of our array. Well, of course, in the code, we know what it is, but let's say we want to print it. We can actually print the length of the array as follows. This array has a property called length. This will give us the number of elements in the array. In this case, it's five. Again, it's not gonna be the last index, it's gonna be the total number of elements. So if we run this, you should see our animals plus the number five, which is our length. Now that brings me to another point. Whenever we're looping through the array, the proper way of doing it is not to say i less than five. We wanna say i is less than the length of our array. So let me get rid of this. And now what we're doing is we're looping, starting at zero, going up to, but not including the length of the array. In, that, in this case, it's five. So we go zero through four. This is the proper way of doing it because that way you never run into issues of trying to access an element that's outside of the bounds of our array, which we'll get to in a minute. Let's first test this. And we get all the proper answers. Now, I did mention something where it's possible to try and access an element of our array that's outside the limit. Let's try that. Here we're trying to set the fifth element of the array to squirrel. Now it seems initially that this is okay because we have five elements in the array, but remember Java starts at zero. One, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. These make up the five elements of the array that we've allocated. So when we try and do this, this is actually technically a sixth element that we're trying to add to the array, we don't have room. So when we run this, Java is going to give us a runtime error. The error is array index out of bounds exception. It tells us the value of the index that we're trying to access that is out of bounds. And then it tells us the line number where the error occurred. Learning arrays, line 11, right here. And then we can fix it. Now we can take that off. Let's do that. Now I want to show you a very common error. We loop from i equals zero to less than or equal to the length. Now that's gonna cause a problem because once again, we don't have room for a fifth item. So when we run this, we get the same exception, except this time it's in line 14 because here we're accessing element number five, which doesn't exist. Now let's talk about multi-dimensional arrays. So a good example would be a tic-tac-toe board. We're gonna use a two-dimensional array for that. 
Here's an example of declaring a variable that's just a standard array. This variable board is a string array, and it's going to hold three strings. If we want to make this two-dimensional, we have to add the following. We add a second set of brackets to indicate that there are two index coordinates, and then we have to give it the length. So in a tic-tac-toe board, across and down are each three. It's a three by three two-dimensional array, and it will store strings. What strings will it store? Well, it'll store either an X, an O, or blank. Here's a visual representation of our tic-tac-toe board. Here's our variable board. It's three by three two-dimensional array. As you can see, the zeroth element of board is actually an array of three elements. Which three elements? Well, these three right here. Of course, board one and board two are also arrays. They're arrays of these three elements and these three elements respectively. The actual element itself is referred to as follows, board of zero of zero. This tells us, give us the zeroth element in the first dimension and the zeroth element in the second dimension. That will give us the actual value, x, o, or blank. So how do we loop through this array so we can print our board? Well, here's a standard loop. If we wanted to loop through the values of a regular single dimensional array, we would do it as follows. We would loop from zero to three, and we would print board of i, and that traverses this index. But we also need to traverse this index, but we have to do it in a very special way. Every single index in this dimension has three items in this dimension. So each time we go through this loop, we have to traverse the inner array, which has three elements. We do this with a nested loop. Inside the green loop, we have this red loop. So when i is zero, we take a look at all three elements when this i is zero. We look at zero, 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 one, zero, two. Then when i becomes one, we do it again. One, zero, one, 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 two, and so on. Now we're gonna head over to NetBeans and we're gonna make this happen. But when we do, we're actually going to give each square in the tic-tac-toe board a random item. It's either going to be X, O, or blank. Let's go. All right, first things first. Let's declare our variable. It's a multi-dimensional array, so we need two sets of brackets. We'll call it board, and it's going to be equal to a new string array, and the dimensions that we're going to allocate are three by three. Now we're going to loop through our array. First, we're going to loop through this dimension. And finally, we'll loop through this dimension. Now inside here, we want to generate a random integer. So first, let's declare a variable for our random number. And we'll say that r is equal to math.random. We're going to multiply this by 3. And then we're going to cast this into an integer. This will give us a number either 0, 1, or 2. And let's say that if we get a number of 0, we'll make that board position an x. If we get a 1, we'll make it an o. And if we get a blank, we'll make it, I'm sorry, if we get a, a 2, we'll make it a blank. So we have our random number, 0, 1, or 2. If the number is 0, we're setting the i comma j position of our array, board i comma j, which is the current item that we're at inside this nested loop, we're going to set it to x. If r is 1, we're going to set this current item, whichever one we're currently focused on, to o. Otherwise, we'll set it to blank. And now, let's print the array. Well, we don't need another loop, a nested loop. We could just print it right here. Here we go. So we randomly set that board position, and then we print either X or O or blank. Let's run it and see how it looks. Okay. And there we go. We have random things. That's blank, 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 zero, X, and so on. Let's run it again. Make sure we get something different. And we do. Here are our nine positions. Now, the only thing is... This isn't printing like a tic-tac-toe board, right? We want to print the first three on one line. So instead of using print line, we should technically use print. 
That way we're not going to jump to the next line every time we print one of the board positions. But now they all print on the same line. That's a problem too. So what we really want to do is every time we go to the next row, which is really here, this is looping through the rows, which is this index. This is looping through the columns within that row, this index. Every time we jump to the next row, we want to print a new line. Let's see how that works. And as you can see, we are now printing our tic-tac-toe board. Now remember, there are blank spaces in here because we're picking random numbers here. So we now have the first row, new line, second row, new line, third row. Again, this are these are the rows, these are the columns within those rows. We go to row one, or row zero actually, and we print all the columns. When we're done printing the columns, we print a new line. Then we go to row number one, print all the columns, print a new line. Then we go to row number two, print all the columns, print a new line. And then we end. Now let's see if we can add little vertical spacers so it looks a little bit more like a tic-tac-toe board. So after each item that we print, we not only want to print the board position element, O or X or blank, but we also want to print a vertical line. See if, let's see how that looks. And it looks good, except we have this line at the end, which we really don't want. So we only want to print the line if J is zero, which is this column, one, which is this column. We don't want to print it after the second column. So we really should put an if statement here, and we would say if J is less than two, then we'll print it. As you can see here, now we have not, we are no longer printing the line after the last element in our array, our J, our J portion of the array. We also want to print the horizontal lines. So where do we want to print those? Well, I think we want to print them here, right? So we want to print, after we go to the new line, we want to print one, two, three, four, five. The pluses will just align with the vertical bars. And there we go. That looks a little bit more like a tic-tac-toe board. Oop, we printed an extra line here. We only want to print one of these after the zeroth row and the first row, not the second row. So let's do the same thing we did here. If I is less than two, then we'll print that. And I think now we finally have a nice looking tic-tac-toe board. Let's run it again. And oh, X just won. All right, I finally won this game. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with others who are learning Java programming. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.